Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 236. O peace of the world, O hope in each breast, O Bethlehem star that ages have blessed, a day of fresh promise breaks over the land. Gaunt warfare is doomed, and God's kingdom at hand. Hymn number 236. scriptural will be given by Nancy from New Jersey. Psalm. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. O Lord, How manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created. And thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Let the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. For the Lord is a great God, and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hill is his also. 
The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Let's now have a moment of silent prayer and follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven, our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious, hallowed be thy name, adorable one, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom is come, thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Now let's sing hymn number 275. Praise now, creative mind, maker of earth and heaven. Glory and power to him belong joy of the sun and skies, strength where the hills arise. So let us praise with joy and song. Hymn number 275.
to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin every Sunday morning here at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion, where we discuss this week's lesson and other topics that need to be discussed and learn better how to practice Christian science each day. We have a Sunday school. Oh, and by the way, we had a really good one this morning. So if you missed it or if you'd like to hear it again, uh, you can find it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. And it will also be available on our YouTube channel and our Vimeo channel. Uh, we have a Sunday school that meets at 11 a.m. every Sunday. And that Sunday school has its own dedicated teleconference number so that any child anywhere can attend by telephone. And uh, in fact, many of our Sunday school students don't live in the area and they do attend via the telephone. So if you don't live in the area and you have a child of Sunday school age, please call us, we'll give you the number and would be very happy to welcome your child to our Sunday school. And we have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15, where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved, transformed, liberated through the study and practice of Christian science. And at all of our services, we have a, a full nursery for infants and toddlers. Uh, we have uh, quite a few t websites, uh, many in languages other than English, so that the pure word of Christian science is now reaching millions, if not billions, of people around the globe, and in many cases in their own language. And everything that we provide on our websites is the very finest Christian science literature, songs, articles available today. And it's all provided free of charge. Everything on all of our websites is available to download, to read, to listen to, free of charge. Freely we have received and freely we give. And that is why we are so grateful to those of you who contribute financially to this tremendous cause. And there's an article that's uh, currently featured on our English website that I'd like to point out, um, an article entitled, God's Law is the Law of Protection, by Edward A. Kimball. Excellent article, very relevant to today. God's law is the law of protection. Everyone is welcome here. Everyone. And that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. And now we will have the reading of a testimony of healing from Science and Health by Mary Baker Eddy which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Elsie from Alabama. Page 655. In love and gratitude to God and to Mrs. Eddy, the interpreter of Jesus' beautiful teachings, I wish to tell of some of the benefits which I have received from Christian science. It is a little over a year since science found me in a deplorable condition, physically as well as mentally. I had ailments of many years standing, chronic stomach trouble, severe eye trouble made almost unbearable, from the constant fear of losing my sight, a fate which had befallen my mother, also a painful rupture of 25 years standing. 
These ailments combined with unhappy conditions in my home made me very despondent. I had entirely lost my belief in an all-merciful God, and I did not know where to turn for help. At that time, Christian science was brought to my notice, and I shall never forget the sublime moment when I perceived that an all-loving Father is always with me. Forgotten was all sorrow and worry, and after four weeks reading in science and health, all my ailments had disappeared. I am today a healthy, contented woman. All this has come to pass in one short year, and my earnest desire is to be more and more worthy to be called a child of God. This is in loving gratitude for an understanding of this glorious truth. Mrs. R.J. Chicago, Illinois. lesson sermon for today can be found on page 20 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, God, the only cause and creator. The golden text is from Psalms. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The responsive reading is also from Psalms. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them, He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Fairly from Maryland will now read. The Bible, Psalms. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee? Thou rulest the raging of the sea, when the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south, thou hast created them. Blessed be the Lord forevermore. Amen and amen. Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening of the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. 
And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in himself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, To you it shall be meat for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. Amos For lo, he that formeth the mountains, and createth the wind, and declareth unto man what is his thought, that maketh the morning darkness, 
and treadeth upon the high places of the earth. The Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. Revelation. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Carol will now read. I will read correlative passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. <clears throat> Creator, spirit, mind, intelligence, the animating divine principle of all that is real and good, self-existent life, truth, and love, that which is perfect and eternal, the opposite of matter and evil, which have no principle. God, who made all that was made and could not create an atom or an element, the opposite of himself. God creates and governs the universe, including man. The universe is filled with spiritual ideas, which he evolves, and they are obedient to the mind that makes them. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2. In the vast forever, in the science and truth of being, the only facts are spirit and its innumerable creations. Darkness and chaos are the imaginary opposites of light, understanding, and eternal harmony. And they are the elements of nothingness. The Jewish tribal Jehovah was a man-projected God, liable to wrath, repentance, and human changeableness. The Christian science God is universal, eternal, divine love, which changeth not and causeth no evil, disease, nor death. It is indeed mournfully true that the older scripture is reversed. In the beginning, God created man in his, God's, image. But mortals would procreate man and make God in their own image. What is the God of a mortal but a mortal magnified? Genesis 1, verse 21. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Spirit is symbolized by strength, presence, and power, and also by holy thoughts winged with love. These angels of his presence, which have the holiest charge, abound in the scriptural atmosphere of mind and consequently reproduce their own characteristics. Their individual forms we know not, but we do know that their natures are allied to God's nature. And spiritual blessings thus typified are the externalized yet subjective states of faith and spiritual understanding. Genesis 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. To emphasize this momentous thought, it is repeated that God made man in his own image. 
to reflect the divine spirit. It follows that man is a generic term. Masculine, feminine, and neuter genders are human concepts. In one of the ancient languages, the word for man is used also as the synonym for mind. This definition has been weakened by anthropomorphism, or a humanization of deity. The word anthropomorphic, in such a phrase as an anthropomorphic god, is derived from two Greek words signifying man and form, and may be defined as a mortally mental attempt to reduce deity to corporeality. The life-giving quality of mind is spirit, not matter. The ideal man corresponds to creation, to intelligence, and to truth. The ideal woman corresponds to life and to love. In divine science, we have not as much authority for considering God masculine as we have for considering him feminine. For love imparts the clearest idea of deity. The lines of demarcation between immortal man representing spirit and mortal man representing the error that life and intelligence are in matter show the pleasures and pains of matter to be myths and human belief in them to be the father of mythology in which matter is represented as divided into intelligent gods. Man's genuine selfhood is recognizable only in what is good and true. Man is neither self-made nor made by mortals. God created man. The universe of spirit reflects the creative power of the divine principle or life, which reproduces the multitudinous forms of mind and governs the multiplication of the compound idea, man. The tree and herb do not yield fruit because of any propagating power of their own, but because they reflect the mind which includes all. A material world implies a mortal mind and man a creator. The scientific divine creation declares immortal mind and the universe created by God. The creative principle, life, truth, and love, is God. The universe reflects God. There is but one creator and one creation. This creation consists of the unfolding of spiritual ideas and their identities, which are embraced in the infinite mind and forever reflected. These ideas range from the infinitesimal to infinity, and the highest ideas are the sons and daughters of God. When will the error of believing that there is life in matter and that sin, sickness, and death are creations of God be unmasked? When will it be understood that matter has neither intelligence, life, nor sensation, and that the opposite belief is the prolific source of all suffering. God created all through mind and made all perfect and eternal. The pains of sense are salutary if they wrench away false pleasurable beliefs and transplant the affections from sense to soul, where the creations of God are good rejoicing the heart. Such is the sword of science with which truth decapitates error, 
materiality giving place to man's higher individuality and destiny. Let us now have a few moments of prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 246. O thou who spreadest the heaven like a tent, he who depends on thee ne'er is forspent. Still for his might on thee he ever counteth. On wings of eagles he unwearied mounteth. Have ye not heard, have ye not known the everlasting God Creator is of heaven and earth, and he alone is Lord. Hymn number 246.
This is my father's world And to my listening ears All nature sings Around me rings The music of the spheres This is my father's world Let's now sing hymn number 62. From all that dwell below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. Let the Redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue. Hymn number 62.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook. The scientific statements have been on the collective passages from 1 John 3rd chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter, or its infinite mind and its infinite manifestation. For God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because he knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Son, this is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. <laughs>